Hi, my name is Martin Perhignac. Welcome back to the digital art series here on PSD Touch Plus. Today we are going to continue talking and learning about drawing drapery in Photoshop. In the previous episode we learned about the basics and uh, we understood how we need to combine the basic tools, the brush tool, mixer brush, the dodge and the burn tools to create a semi-realistic drapery and today's seminar will be about how to use the same technique to create a character art, a concept art and in this case we are going to use the drapery to create the robe of a skeleton mage or a necromancer. So uh, this is just a very quick uh, example. It took me one and a half hours to draw this from scratch or from the from the sketches. Um, but obviously, the more time you spend on a digital painting, probably the better it will be, and uh, uh, you can work on more details. I just wanted to do this quickly and to be able to show you the whole uh, the whole process. Okay, so we will see how to do the whole drawing from start to finish. Um, actually, <laughs> the start is going to be from the sketches. So I, I don't want to do the sketches in the tutorial because we already had another tutorial about that. As you can see, the sketches uh, are going to be these. And I did two sketches because I was thinking first to do uh, the character from front but then I decided to do him more from the the left or from the right uh, from the side uh, or a little bit from the back uh, to be able to show more of the the drapery and to make it a bit more dramatic okay so that's all what we need to know uh, about this uh, episode and let's get started with the drawing so as you can see I'm going to work on a separate layer and I'm going to turn off the skeleton itself and just leave on the drapery. I'm cleaning up the edges first of all because the rough sketch that I had was just a guide but now I would like to use these lines uh, for my artwork so I'm going to go through uh, all the lines and make sure that they are nice and clean. So as you can see I'm using the brush tool and just simply draw over all these areas and I would like to define uh, the folds or use the folds to define the shape and I always keep in mind what I have under the drapery or under the clothes in this case we have a skeleton so in this case there are not much to hold these uh, this drapery um, so I would like to I would like to try to somehow emphasize that. So I'm going to use uh, some folds on the back just to show a bit of that twist in uh, on the upper uh, body. And at this stage I wasn't really sure about colors or uh, about uh, the wand or stuff that he's going to, to uh, hold later on. I just want to do it quickly and as you can see I filled in uh, these lines with white. Uh, I prefer to, to use white and then draw over it uh, with black and white and then later on use uh, color to create uh, the final detail but I prefer to work with uh, just black and white tones, tonal values and it's always better if you have white already on the on the image itself as you can see now I start to use a soft edge brush and I start to fill in the shadows on the same layer and because I filled in uh, the whole drapery with white I can turn on the transparency lock in the layers panel and that makes sure I will only draw over the drapery itself so I won't go outside the edges. And this is just a very quick way to create the tonal values that we need. So mainly the shadows so to, to define the three dimensional form. I'm using uh, 5 to 10 percent uh, opacity on this brush and black as my color. 
and the soft edge and I'm drawing over this layer your line art and this layer can be the same so the tonal values and the line art can be the same because then as you can see now I'm already switched to the mixer brush tool to smudge or mix together or blend together the lines and uh, the tonal values now I am started using the burn tool to emphasize the shadows further so I can now clearly define the darkest parts of the of the image which definitely will be under the uh, the cape the head head part and in the back I'm thinking of uh, uh, the lighting in this case uh, coming from the top and the front but uh, once I'm going to uh, apply shadows you will see how I'm thinking of the lights now I'm using the hue saturation adjustment layer with colorize option turned on and I turn it into a red color design on the cape you don't really need to uh, know the exact details on the hue saturation adjustment layer but if you want to see it you can always go back and pause uh, the video if you want to read the exact values that I used but it's not really necessary it's better if you use uh, whatever you like it can be any colors there's no real rules for that okay so now I'm using uh, the brush tool and I'm adding some orange highlights on the on the cape um, because it's always good to mix in more color variations into your design because in, if you only use the dodge and burn tool then it will look a bit fake it's it will be monochrome you will only use one color and just change uh, the tonal value of that color the brightness of that color instead of that in real life if you want to make it a bit more realistic make it a bit more realistic in colors you should always incorporate other colors as well so in this case for the highlights I'm using orange or yellow colors and for this side on the right I'm using blue which is which is going to define another light source which you will see later on I'm just preparing that light source now and it's also a good way to make your colors a bit more rich in values to use something uh, complementary to the red colors so if you only use like red and orange it might be a bit dull but if you incorporate like blue as well into your drawing then it will make it make a difference it will make it a bit more stand out now as you can see I'm switching back and forth between the tools that I used previously I'm again using the mixer brush tool to define the folds further on on the drapery and I'm smudging or blending together these new colors the orange into the red and the blue also into the red and I'm defining more the highlights as well I'm adding now pink colors also into my design just to create more highlights and once once I finish these I will probably again use the mixer brush tool to blend these together again by the way I'm working on one layer as you can see so most of the cases I'm not really bothered about my layers when I'm doing digital art um, obviously if you use separate layers for every element it can help you to be to work non-destructively but it sometimes it just makes it a bit more difficult to make your changes so most of the times I like to keep it simple and just work on one layer especially if it's a character or a, uh, a model and maybe if I if I do a background which you will see later on in this video then I'm going to start using a separate layer for the background because that's some, definitely something that I would like to keep separate now as you can see I turned back on that layer with the sketch the original sketch of the skeleton just to quickly fill in those areas because before I finish and uh, get to the final results on the drapery I would like to also draw the skeleton itself and as you can see now I turn the background to black 
because here I changed my mind and I wanted to basically to see uh, the hand of the skeleton which is going to be very bright and on a white background it will be lost and obviously the whole theme of uh, a skeleton mage it's better better in a in a darker background it looks better and now as you can see I'm using the same technique just blocking in first the main shape uh, to capture the whole expression and whole uh, detail uh, for the skull but then later on I will zoom closer and I will define it further as you can see I'm trying different things I'm just planning what I'm going to do really with the skull and now I'm starting I started to add more details I'm building, building a bit the shadows uh, and I'm also working on the holes on the eye and the nose so I try to uh, I try to create the outline for the whole skull. Now I'm going to add uh, more colors to it. Now probably it's, it's going to be a bit later. I, I work a bit on the hand now and I'm just cleaning up those edges that I had in the in the sketch. I'm using now the levels adjustment layer as you can see I made it more or I increased the contrast by dragging the highlight and the shadow values closer to the middle. You can do it on a separate adjustment layer, but once again, this was something that I was sure that I would like to do, so I just simply used it destructively from the adjustments menu. Now I'm working on uh, forward on the skull and on some lines around the cape. You can see I'm defining more details, like the teeth, and the eyes and I, I turn the inside of the of the cloth more darker make it more menacing and now I'm going to work up the hand also a bit more properly and uh, while I'm doing this I'm I'm always going back and forth on the on the cloth as well even though that's more detailed I would like to work on some details there as well as you can see now I also just finalize the drapery, the folds and try to make it a, as, a, as a whole, the whole painting. Again I'm working still on the skull and now I'm going to create the wand or the staff. I just draw it quickly I don't want to spend too much time on this because this tutorial is not really about uh, the character art but once I started drawing a character it's hard to finish so I would like to add some details to it like this uh, wand with the effect around it in this um, version of the recording it's not really uh, good details in the background uh, the quality of this uh, video tutorial won't show you all the colors that I had in the original design but you will have a rough idea what I did there okay I just used the radial gradient by the way for that purple effect around it and I mainly use the brush tool I'm adding some glow on the skull as well just to reflect that purple light and I'm going to add I'm, I'm just experimenting with some details in the background but I'm going to leave it black and probably I'm going to change the intensity of the colors now I'm using a vibrance adjustment layer and as you can see now the colors are much more intense than before and this is actually the color that I was looking for now I'm placing the same color on the bottom I'm using uh, the elliptical selection tool and then I just um, use the feather as well on it and filled it in with the same red color and as you can see I use it on the bottom to create that light effect there and I do the same thing behind the wand just to emphasize that purple haze around the uh, head piece and now I'm going to 
I just added a distort effect and I'm just playing around with effects but this is again something that you don't really need to uh, stick to I just used a distort uh, filter on that effect but you can always do this with just simply making a selection and filling it with a gradient tool I'm adding more purple details on the hand as well as you can see I draw the hand a bit more properly adding more details now I'm going to start adding details on the drapery as well and I work up the skull further so you can see I just zoom closer and I would like to work up the skull a little bit further and the whole cape around it I'm cleaning up the edges as well it's getting there but it's still not finished I'm still not happy with the results even though it's just a, a concept or a sketch I would like to add a little bit more details so I'm just playing around and thinking of something like this using again just simply the brush tool I added some details there and then I'm going to add some more shadows to make or increase the contrast and I work up a little bit more details on the skull now again if you know more about anatomy then it comes really handy when you draw skeletons so it's really good to, to practice drawing skulls and bones and skeletons uh, and if you if you know your anatomy well then it will really help you whenever you need to create a character the whole uh, character itself but in this case uh, drawing skulls comes really handy because I can add some some fine details there I'm working on the eye details and I'm adding a little bit of glow on the eye just to add more live life to it you can see I'm I'm again working on the edges just to define the details there and for this I just used a brush tool with black now I'm again using the burn tool to define or emphasize the shadows that will make the whole uh, drapery more three-dimensional I'm using some more colors on the staff and I try to define the shadow of the staff on the drapery will also make it look a bit more three-dimensional and I'm almost done I would like to just add some shadows on the ground so we already have that light there but to make it look more realistic I need to have a shadow behind uh, the skeleton and something like that and I also changed the light source a bit that's why to ha it's good to have that on a separate layer so now just the final uh, touches on the image I'm using again a separate layer to create these uh, bolts coming out from the, the wand, the headpiece and just to create that effect, that electrical shock around it and I'm just changing the opacity, adding a little bit of blur on it and basically that's all what we need obviously we can always continue working after this point but for this tutorial that's all I wanted to show so you can see the technique that we've learned in the last episode drawing drapery can come really handy whenever you work on a digital painting in this case on a character design I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I hope you will join me next time as well. So practice and I hope I will see you next time. Thanks a lot for your attention.